Today we're gonna look at badges. Some things in the game go relatively fast, like getting your castle to level 25 or getting your lord to level 60. Now other things like commanders need a bit more investing and this also counts for badges. Now the main difference with obtaining commanders is that the game offers many ways of obtaining badges. However, there's not many ways of choosing which badges to get. It is all random. Now pretty much since I started playing about one year ago, I've been spending most of my Alliance coins on badge chests. In the Alliance shop you can find rare badges containing a badge common to rare. As it goes for Alliance coins, I don't see much better ways to spend the coins. Except maybe a transnational relocation scroll. If you need to go to another kingdom and you're a free to play player. That did not count for me. Now of course in the diamond shop you can also buy the chest for diamonds. And I was often asked, what is better? Epic? Or legendary. I didn't often buy them for diamonds or at least not from the diamond shop but I would always say epic because the chance of getting a legendary badge is really really low however the chance of getting a common badge is really really high so you, when you buy five of the legendary chests you have much more chance to get five common or gray badges from the legendary than even one legendary badge while the epic badge chest has no chance of giving common as the lowest badge you can get from those is uncommon or green that makes the legendary badge virtually useless. Now in the VIP shop you can also get 3 legendary badges each day for half the price. Obviously that's better than buying 3 epic chests for the full price, but you need VIP 13. Something only even I recently unlocked. Now I haven't bought much VIP items, so me taking 1 year to get VIP 13 is gonna be about a 1 year goal for a free to play player. Other than that there are many events giving you badge chests. And surprisingly, most of them are also for free players. For example, Alliance Mobilization, but those are mostly rare. And the one I showed you earlier for the Icebound Keep, they both come about once a month. Now looking at the badges, you can pretty much put them in two categories. You have your troops and you have your fortifications. The troops have attack badges and they have defense badges and there's also health badges, but if you only see them only like twice in a whole year time from events. Now forget about the fortification badges, they are useless unless you happen to have a legendary one and then a rare attack badge is still better. Most of my badges are rare, but I do have several legendary infantry badges and a lot of epic badges as well. Now I'm a bit ahead of infantry badges because I often bought those at Tyrus in the Westerosi Navigator. Now it's up to you which troop is most important. What is your front line? Spearmen? Or maybe infantry? Those guys are going to take the biggest hit, so you want to focus a bit on your primary frontline troops. But you don't have full control of this, of course, because besides the health badge events and the Westerosi Navigator, you often can't choose your badges. Now, since a few months, we can also combine badges, which helps a lot in obtaining a better badge. Okay, currently we are in a very good uh, position to test buying 8 badge chests of each type, Legendary, Rare and Epic. So let's get to the Alliance shop and buy 8 badge chests. Rare from there. Um, then we're going to the event and we're gonna buy whatever legendary badge we can, which are six, and we will get two more from the VIP shop. Next up, we rush to the diamond shop and we buy eight there as well, which cost us 48,000. This means we have eight badge chests each, so let's open the RAS first. All the badges we gained were common, so that didn't help us at all. Now it goes away a bit fast, but let's do the legendary first because they also contain commons. Let's open them all eight. And we have actually two rare badges and the rest were common. So that's not bad. That is not bad and I'm especially happy with the infantry assault badge. But if we look at the eight epic chests now, we will have at least two rares because you can combine four uncommons for one rare so in general that's two rares so that's already we have a bigger chance right now to get better loot from the epic chest so let's open them as well and these are all uncommon so currently they were both pretty much the same thanks to the rare badges i got now we can make another rare badge because we will have four of these that gives us at least two rare infantry badges other than that it wasn't really good we can still make a uh, rare spearman badge as well, defense. No, I rather would have attack badges. 
but everything goes at this point. Now what you can do now is you can unattach three spearman badges. That will leave a few holes in your gear. But because we already had one rare spearman badge, we can now combine that, those four rares to an epic one. After that you re-equip them again. And we have now at least three epic defense badges on my armor. Now if your cavalry for example is not your front line, it isn't a bad plan to actually unequip a defense badge and put a weaker attack badge in its place because they will not be taking much hits. If they just attack without taking damage the 3.75% attack is more useful and this way you slowly build up your badges one by one and you buy whatever you can. You probably won't have the spare diamonds but if you have the spare alliance coins at least buy the badges all the time. Considering all the stats of all the things the badges are in the end the biggest contribution to your troop attack, your troop defense even bigger than the gear, even bigger than the commanders, and even bigger than whatever you get from buffs from like the hall of faces or the dungeon. So I hope you like this little guide on batches and I hope it helps you a little bit. Thank you for watching, don't forget to subscribe and like the video and I hope to see you next video.